Shall we begin? You aren't stuck in traffic. You are traffic. Let's begin now. Please get that bicycle-shaped object out of this shop. Oh, no, dude. No mix and match here. Black bottoms are full-on dead. Pedal on, bro. Pedal on. Let's begin, bro. Oh, jeez. Learn the hard way. Wider is better. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. You're just downloading or listening to Bike Shop CX. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading, everyone. Music I'm using on today's show is Bee Jew by Philly Run. As always, you can download this tune at the Free Music Archive, where you get it for free. All right. This is We Are Hot and Heavy into uh, membership drive weeks here. So as part of that, I'm trying to put out some extra content for you guys just as a way to say thanks for becoming a member. Thanks for being a member if you are a member. Thanks for thinking about becoming a member um, and all that stuff. Just a, a general thanks to, to you. We're gonna. I'm trying to put out a little more content during this time so you guys can uh, have that to listen to if you want. And if you don't want, that's fine too. You can just listen to the regular Bike Shop CX show. So today, I'm calling this uh, this edition of Bike Shop CX, Do They Do That in Europe? With me from England is Neil Mansfield. Neil, of course, does the great show, The Crosscast. I've been an avid listener of that for a while. You may have heard Neil has sent us questions on Bike Shop CX many times and um, done some pretty cool stuff. Uh, so we've got Neil on. We're going to get his uh, take on the national trophy series that they do over there there's a lot of talk in the u.s right now about where we gotta get back to our national series still what's going on everything's you know our c1s are disappearing uh the world cups what's gonna happen with this crazy absolutely crazy world cup schedule uh i say schedule it's not really a schedule framework that we've got so far uh and basically no other information what's going on so we're gonna get part of you know neil's input on a lot of this stuff uh we're gonna talk about the two races that happened this weekend uh, and, you know, just kind of get his take on that. And we're going to talk about the racing a little bit. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it. It's going to be good fun. So get ready for Do They Do That in Europe? Because that's enough of my yapping. Let's get on with it. The bike shop is open. All right, Bike Shop CX listeners, we are back. This is going to be a special edition. We're going to call this Do They Do That in Europe? And with me on the line, direct from Nottingham, Neil Mansfield from the Crosscast. Neil, welcome to Bike Shop CX. It's a pleasure. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> I've been a listener for a long time. Did you actually um, listen to episode I one? Uh, well, <laughs> episode one for me or episode one for you? For me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a long time. I, I can remember listening to you when we were, yeah, I, dr I was driving across the Czech Republic one day and I, I could, you, we're bound to be talking. I think, actually, I think it was where you talk about the shiz numbers and that was so exciting. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's my favorite. <laughs> People always ask, when are you going to do more shiz numbers? But but are you, you're being serious, I take it, right? Shiz numbers is like, once you get your head around it, it's brilliant. Or maybe yeah. you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but where, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it's brilliant if you have got time to wait. But, yeah. um, for a lot of us people that don't have... <laughs> no, you need it to come in the post tomorrow. Right. It's like, right. Okay, I know this one works. Right. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. order this. Just get an exact berry. same this one. This is going to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny. Well, that's, yeah, that's a long time. That's back in the old bike shop show days. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, we, so you were like through the year we took off and then we came back and, oh my goodness. Well, speaking of podcasts, though, tell us about your show. The Crosscast, 
Yeah, How's we that? did the cross with the crosscast, which I present. I'm kind of the host, and then I present it with uh, Matt Payne and Bruce Dalton. And so we all kind of take on a different role on it. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm the I'm kind of the weekend warrior, Uber fan who knows how to edit audio. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of the host of the show. Um, and then Matt, he is that his job. He is a pro commentator. That's his job. And so he's done. You may have heard him on some of the UCI commentary in the past. He's not doing he's not doing that at the moment, but he's done that in the past. And he mm-hmm. was on the bike channel when that was uh, when that was going in Europe. And then Bruce Dalton, he's he's kind of a he's kind of an icon really in yeah. in the UK scene. So and he's in the, he's in the this. industry, right? He's in the bike How, industry. He is, but he's raced full time gotcha. in the past. Gotcha. Um, so he's and he's been around cross. Yeah, you know, he, he he says that he's only like he's not even thirty yet, but he's <laughs> got this amazing memory. From, of course, for the races where he was racing, so he can sure. say, "Oh yeah, do you remember that race in two thousand and two when?" And myself and Matt are just nod. Like, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It wasn't that the days before even YouTube existed. So yeah, <laughs> so Bruce takes on the he's the, he's the insider. You know, he works in the industry. He's got his finger on the pulse. He knows everyone. You know, he's friends of all of the key people. He knows um, Christian Rocker and Verbecken and knows people like Fabian Cancellare. Goes out riding with him. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, he really knows what's going on out there. So between the three of us, we kind of you, know, you do get a genuine impression of us. But yeah, you know, we, we kind of act up almost to our personas on the show. Um, <laughs> and then we, we kind of have a really good opinion um, be- between those. So, yeah, we've been going three years. Before that, um, I was I was podcasting for a show called The Velocast that uh-huh. I think you probably know. Yep. Um, and so I was doing occasional bits in the show about Cross for mm-hmm. about three years. Okay. And then we decided to spin out the crosscast. Um, and the reason for it actually was because there was, there are a few people out there like myself, Matt and Bruce. And at the time, if you remember, you had to kind of tune into some Flemish feed and there weren't many people out there that were doing this. Yeah. Like the three of us, we yeah. could have really passionate conversations about it, but it's so inaccessible. Right. And the thing with racing of any, any sport racing, if you know the backstories, if you know what to look for, then that's where the fun begins, really. Yeah, but it's if, a richer you, experience. Like, Yeah, and so what we wanted to do is to grow the sport. Uh-huh. And we wanted to grow particularly the international aspect of it. And so, so when people watch the World Cups, which were about the only thing available with English commentary, at least they knew who the people were. Mm-hmm. And that's where it began. So yeah. we started doing that, and... Yeah, and the the listeners have have grown and grown. But the other side of it is, of course, we're in the UK. You know, obviously, friends of friends of yours and mine have <laughs> uh, been podcasting about cross um, for a long time. Uh-huh. Um, but what wasn't covered was the UK scene as well. So gotcha. again, people would turn up and they'd see these riders ride past, but they actually wouldn't know the backstories, wouldn't know who they are. Right. They wouldn't know the venues. And now it's become quite a tradition in the UK. There's a there's a hardcore of probably about five hundred people if you include the parents and sure. the pit crews and the riders who go to the National Trophy series. Right. And it's quite a tradition for a lot of those riders that they listen to the cross cast on the way because then it gets them in the mood. <laughs> it's kind of their their expectations and of course we always make sure we give as much information as we can and we can't we are now seen as the go-to place for not only the riders but the organizers as well they want to be on the show and they want to yes. say all of the key info just to build the excitement for the race yeah so yeah it works great we love it yeah i mean the number of times myself or david and i have have gotten to a race we're parked and we're chit-chatting and the person who is Park just parked next to us and is unloading their vehicle. They'll look over at us and say, I was just listening to you guys, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was just listening to you on my way to the race. Um, and so that's so cool to hear that you guys have that same experience over there. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we, it's, it's what we do it for. Yeah. Uh, and I think that we're seeing, we're seeing some uh, payback for that, um, not in terms of pay, but in terms <laughs> right. of the events. Yeah, we do have more spectators. People do know more of the riders. And certainly I get a lot more shouts now while yes. I'm 
you know, ra- racing around trying not to be lapped <laughs> uh, compared to um, back before those days. <laughs> Um, well, one of the things that you mentioned that we wanted to get together and talk about today was um, the National Trophy Series. This is the UK National Trophy Series. It's already started. Where I, I believe we've you guys have completed two races. Yeah, that's right. So we've got six rounds this year. Okay, we've done two rounds in kind of in the, in England so far this weekend. It's Scotland, baby. Ah. Yeah, so we're going we're going up north. Uh, to a place called Irvine, which is it's quite close to Glasgow. Uh, anyone who's been, uh, but it's on the coast. Uh-huh. And it's a place called it's a place called Beach Park. So that's one which is coming up this week. And then we we uh, go around the country. But there's a round in Wales as well this year. So it's it's covering certainly Great Britain. We don't, right. We've never been over to Northern Ireland, as far as I know. But um, yeah, they certainly for, it covers all of Great Britain. And it's been going on for quite a while. Do you know what what year this is? I mean, it's over 10. I mean, it's it's something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, it's a, been, a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's been part of the establishment. You know, right. People right. that I know who have kind of been racing cross forever. Right. And they've got stories of races back in you know, 10, 20 years ago. Of, but, the, you know, there's other races. You know, you've heard of the, the Three Peaks, which is, right. <laughs> which is a one-off. It's unlike anything is that, else. Is uh, that really a that, cross race? I mean, that is like, that's like... That's almost like a thing all on its own, isn't it? <laughs> really, right? Because there's yeah. there's not like a pit where you can exchange bikes and stuff, right? That that thing I want. Well, I always there's, think there's one very very long pit. Oh, there's like oh, 40 the whole miles long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is, you can you can do, actually they've changed the rules. There, you you can't exchange on the road now. Okay, because um, there were people exchanging on the road, which was a bit dangerous because it's an open road. Do they have like <laughs> checkpoints then where you can you can? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you they've oh, but the marsh it's one of those ones where the marshals you think respect to you no this is it, it's always even if it's nice in the valleys on the on the tops of the mountains it's always windswept it yeah it can be really cold horrible up in if it's raining yeah and there's this dedicated team of marshals up there who are you know <laughs> when you've, you've got your tag that you have to dip in to get your timings and you think okay respect to you yeah you know, if it wasn't for these volunteers yeah then the race wouldn't happen <laughs> and it's been going for 50 years so yeah it's, yeah it's, i mean uh, Big big deal. I, I always think of that as more like an adventure race. You know, it's it's just uh, it's just one of those things people like. They it's you know it's their bucket list thing, right? It's like some point in my life I'm I'm going to do this, right? So yeah, and I think right. I think um, it's worldwide now. I mean, we hear people over here talking all the time about oh, I want to do three peaks someday. You know, yeah, and they should. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 great. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, it's an experience. Everyone has <laughs> their own three peak story. You right. Know, how everyone's sure. got their own story about certain key life moments. Well, this is the key life moment. <laughs> yeah. The first time you do the piece. <laughs> exactly. uh, but you've got to remember that when it started, this was back to, you know, when you kind of see those old um, movie reels of cyclocross going on the internet from like the uh, 1940s. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, and they're the like 1960s. throwing their bikes in rivers and then running through the yeah. river and then picking the bike up as they go and stuff like well, that. Well, imagine that you've got an event like that. But yeah. It just kept going every <laughs> year, every year, every year. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You know, now it's been going so long and it's, it's effectively the only one of those types of events that still exists as far yeah. as I know uh, in the, in, in this form. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Is it a cross race? Well, technically it is, but if it didn't already exist, yeah. there's no way it would ever get any approval <laughs> at all. Uh, but because it's historical, let's go for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, well, that's just awesome. Um, All right. So back to the series stuff. Uh, The the (laughs) national series, um, you know, we have been saying over here in the U.S. for years, ever since the USGP went away, um, that we have got to get back to a national series. One of the things. So one of the things I want to ask you about the U.K. National Trophy Series is um, what does this do? Does this like focus everybody's attention like? on that schedule and, and everybody knows the six weeks of those races, kind of everybody knows where to go, right? We're all going to go here uh, for this weekend because this is where the big race is. And it kind of gives everybody an outline for the season of kind of how things are going to play out. Do you, does it work that way over there? It does. If you're at the sharp end of the races, there's no question about that. Uh-huh. Um, so if you're wanting the, the, the big points, this is where they are. Um, these, this is the most competitive racing. 
the the events they're all they're all really well organized i have to say uh, even when you know when a day doesn't go quite as well as the people as the organizer was hoping even those ones are still brilliant still days. real good yeah uh, yeah um and the courses are they tend to be those races where if you can use skills then you can be quick mm-hmm. so if if you want a challenge it doesn't matter where you are down the field or down the race field if you want a challenging course they are challenging but they're not stupid right so, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if something goes wrong they have really good um you know safety system in place and so you, you can kind of you, you can ride with the best and you'll get ruts and it's it, they're great they're really good events um in terms of is it the focus nationally the, there is a bit of a difficulty with it uh with, that everyone just gets on with and manages which is they are the same dates as local leagues. So if you're racing in a local league, okay. and the UK's got lo- this, it must have ten local leagues, and some of them, the quality of the events are phenomenal. So right. The, the, the league I race in, Notts and Derby League, you know, you go to those, and people think that it's a professional outfit putting them on, but it's all volunteers. Yeah. And so they like like it is like it is in most parts of the world, uh, but then you've got a race which might clash. So in my local league this year, I'm not going to be able to qualify. I won't do enough rounds because I'm going to all the national trophies. Gotcha. So I, so personally for me, I've got to take that choice of what do I want? Do I want to be pack fodder at the national trophy? Because my <laughs> days of winning points at the national trophy are beyond me until I become a vet 50 next year. <laughs> right. then, then I'm going to win it. <laughs> but, you know, um, or do you, do you focus on not going to them and, and racing in your local league? And some leagues, there's one league, um, I know of that they actually have a separate league. They've kind of got two in one, and one of them is the non-trophy league okay. and the trophy league. So if you race on those days where there's a clash, um, it's to kind of a separate separate points locally. Gotcha. So there is a bit, there is a there is a bit of a, a tension there between uh-huh. the local ones, but it's it's in a it's in a good way. You you would never have a local race in the same area as a national. Gotcha. So um, the the uh, so the one local to me in Derby, we would never have a local race on the same weekend as that, partly because all the marshals will, will want to go and help out and volunteer at the national trophy. But depending on where they are in the country, if they're closer to the continent, then we'll get a lot of international riders come over. Right. Uh, partly because historically, when the quality of the British scene wasn't as good as it is now, they sort of would see it as perhaps quite some easy points. And if they're trying to get their ranking up, yeah, then they could come and almost guarantee some points. That's no longer the case. <laughs> so uh, now the domestic scene is so good that people who are wanting to come over for the the ones which are close, more in the south, so places like Crawley, which is near London, and even the Derby one, which is um, central. Uh, but we do get a lot of international riders coming over for those. Yeah, well, and and you know if they don't. Your the the schedule only being six races. I say only, not that that's not enough but like it's spread out well you guys have one in september two in october two in november and then one in december so there's still room within that for all these smaller series to do their thing right yeah there is i mean this year things were moved around slightly because we had the road world championships in oh sure sure so we had to pull the round one earlier than we would have done otherwise okay so that was slightly earlier but the fact that the national trophy is complete by the middle of December. There's a lot of people, myself included, who are disappointed in that. You know, we'd like to carry on racing into January, yeah. you know, have that final round in January. But you know, that that's fine. It's it's six rounds. We 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 get a good series. It's well spaced out every few weeks. And you know what it's like. You know, we we love cross partly because of the community there, and mm-hmm. you know, we basically go away every weekend with our friends and yeah, you know, of course, just have great fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's really cool. And I believe I was looking up, they're all six R U C I C two races. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no C ones. And see, this is, this is how I, what I think the U S is headed for is a, a more, more dependent on C two races, maybe a a few C one races. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but then that's it. You for so when when racers in the UK want to go get C one points, what do they have to do? Well, go to the two continent. Things. One is they yeah. One is why would they want C one points? If there's if there's any benefit to them, yeah, then they can yeah they can search out C one races. But for most people, it doesn't make much difference actually. It's those if they get UCI points 
anywhere, they're going to be gridded at the front of the national trophies. And actually, the national trophy is the big thing. Right. If you're someone who is wanting to race on the continent and to find the C1s, then actually the national trophy isn't such a big deal for you anyway. Sure. So uh, it, it, what you tend to see is people focusing on one or the other. So you look at riders like um, Ben Turner or Thomas Main. Yep. Um, Hel- you know, Helen Wyman, Nikki Bramier. Yep. They've, they, Anna Kay. We, I've never seen that. Well, Anna Kay, she, she does ride the national trophies. Okay. So she's kind of in that difficult position at the moment. Because she's still young she's, enough, right? She can... <laughs> yeah, so she raced, um, she raced the first round here. Um, okay. But uh, in the, I've, I've, I don't ever, well, I don't recall seeing um, Nikki Bramier or Helen Wyman uh-huh. racing a national trophy for a long, long time. And it's because they are, they're racing the different series. If they came right. to the UK, they don't actually get a race. They get a training ride because they were <laughs> so far ahead of everyone else. But yeah. now things have changed. So we do have a lot of riders who go and base themselves in Belgium. And they uh, the, 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 the downside of, of that is that they can't race the trophy. But that opens right. it up to other people and other riders develop. Yeah. And then the trophy series has its own point system, correct? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we get, so the points in the trophy are, I'll, I'll, because of where I finish in, in my Vex race, <laughs> um, I wish that they went a bit, uh, slightly further down another 10 or so places would be great, but they don't. Uh, so you get those points. And then there's also the national ranking points. So actually what people chase in the UK are national ranking points or national okay. trophy points. Yeah. And uh, most people don't even, you know, it, it's not a motivation for them to go and to go and ride these uh, unless you're an international. So the international is the only races you'll ever see the international riders come over for. And we have a few that race regularly in the UK. They're only the national trophies. Okay. So, and then, every, and then everybody, you guys are doing nationals in January, I see. Um, yeah, same day as everyone else, surely. <laughs> right. Except the U.S. now, right? The first year we switch back to December, everyone else goes to January, and now we're like we've, in the middle again. We've, yeah, we've always been in January, so um, yeah. yeah. I, th- I thought that you were moving back to January, but you I, know, you're, I think you're that the is local the, knowledge. That is the plan, but for this year, it's still in December. This this season, okay. yeah, yeah. I think it's next year would be the first. Oh, right. So we'll have another year with two national champions, which we've already had twice. <laughs> yeah, 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 and one year with no national champion, and one year with no national champion, right? <laughs> right. So, um, now we were talking. So the the new UCI rule for races being C designated as C ones has just uh, devastated the C one scene here in the U.S. Um, we're down to three this year. I think it's going to be less than that next year, maybe. Um, and that this is the rule I'm talking about where. Uh, the UCI is implemented. You need to have to continue as a C1. You need to have 10 riders, at least 10 foreign riders from at least five other countries. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I was going to ask you, what do you feel about that as far as races in the UK? But it doesn't seem like that's going to affect you guys too much. Well, I, th- I, I really feel for the US because in the US, it's always been the case that whether it's a C1 or C2, it's a big deal. Yeah. And I think it's almost like, I think it's an unintended consequence. Uh-huh. I'd like to say I think it's an unintended consequence of this rule change, which was re- to sort things out in in Europe, mm-hmm. where you get some races that where the classification every race has got ten international riders in, and so right uh, it, it 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 kind of stops being meaningful. But I think the unintended consequence of it is it it devalues unnecessarily the U.S. races. But we, we, I was talking about this with. Yeah, my we my family are all cross riders, and we're talking about this. Um, yeah, only over the week last yesterday. Yeah, and we so say if there are U.S. races, and you know this becomes a really big deal, uh-huh. then why they could be reaching out to ri- European riders, you know, like the races in China do, yes. where they reach out to riders in the UK you know, and elsewhere, and they say, you know, can you come over and ride, and we'll put you up and we'll you know give you free entry and the three the three c1s that we do have right now two of them one of them is rochester one of them was jingle cross right and jingle cross the c1 is the day before a world cup so you know you're gonna make the 10 rider five country rule there right 
everybody's there for the World Cup the next day, and they do the C1 the day before. So it's in the exact same place, right? So you know you're going to make that. Rochester has the um, the nice position of being the week before the first World Cup that was over here. So again, people are coming over. They want time to acclimate, get on the time schedule, and so they're here at least a week ahead of time. So they stop in Rochester on their way and do that race, and that really helps them meet that quota. But this weekend coming up, you know, we've been, it's been weeks since the World Cup, since the Trek World Cup here. Um, most, you know, the, the scene is really picking up in Europe. Uh, everyone's back over there, and we have Cincy this week. That's still a C1, um, but they're kind of in the middle of nowhere now. They don't have, they're not close enough to a World Cup to still have European riders over here. You know, when we have the Continental Championships, we get a, a, a couple riders come up from like South America, mm. you know? So why why are we not doing something more to preserve these uh, these three C1s that yeah. we still have, in my opinion? So and I, what's I just the date of Cincy? It's this coming weekend. It's uh, so, yes. So this weekend, you yeah. look at what's going on. There's you, know, you look at the European calendar, <laughs> yeah. and there's more races than you could possibly ride. Right. There's there's right. there's, there's Neapel and Brabant, uh-huh. both of them on the 26th, and there's Havre and there's a national trophy in the UK on the 27th. So you got right. four. Yeah, you know, high quality races in two right. days. Yeah. And so people aren't going to travel. No. And no. if there's good quality elsewhere which is closer to home and may have may have more value mm-hmm. unless they've got a reason to go so i, I yeah I, I i think it's a i say i think it's unintended consequences yeah. but I, I think there could be could be ways to help but yeah it's a it's a high bar to reach that yeah, for yeah the number that's of true. nationalities that's yeah. not easy yeah and then you know the last for, well for two of the last three years i had it's, i was supporting australia and new zealand riders right and that really that helped the numbers because hey here's all it takes is one right one rider and one whole country and you get a little boost from that so you know you could even look that way a little bit and say you know australia is i know they're getting into their road season and stuff and so is new zealand but i know there's racers over there who just specialize in cross and if you made them a decent you know made it a little easier for them to come over here and get into the, the Cincy race. Maybe you could help, you know, that'd be two, two more countries right there. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I think you're right though about the, if, if they're going to be serious about this, then or USA cycling, if they could make it more, more obvious, mm-hmm. you know, if they could, uh, they could approach some of the, you know, not the absolute top tier teams, but some of the other teams say, Hey, yeah. And you know, you go over and ride, Ray race Coppenberg cross on the 1st of November every year. What about come over and race this one? Um, you know, great fun, something a bit different. And you know, we, we've we've got some hosts who can help you out with accommodation. Yeah, you know, and, and and we've got uh, someone who can lend you some bikes. Yeah, you know, and that would make such a huge difference. And I think I I think people, well, I can't talk for people. I, I, if if someone <laughs> approached my team, yeah, I think people would actually have a good look at that. Whether they'd be able to make it and the timing would work, I don't know. But I think there'd be interested in doing that and instead of you know instead of going away for a week to belgium why not do something a bit different and go and race in cincy you look at the number who go over to china that's what i think yeah you look at the you, know, you look at the front of that field and it's it's people that you you, know, you ha- you're if you're a cyclocross obsessive like i think we are then you you would know them but they're not the household names um and look at the back of those fields the people that are getting 80 percented we have no idea who they are. They've gone out and they've just had a great fun. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, now, yeah. at the same time, um, I think another, like you were just talking about unintended consequences, we have this new, the new World Cup, not really the schedule, but the new, the outline has come out, I think, two, three days ago. And it's really creating some turmoil. Are you hearing about this? Is it, is it, is it tumultuous over there like it is here right now? <laughs> With I that coming we're, out, I, yeah, well, I think we're head scratching at the moment. <laughs> we're looking at it and thinking, okay, um, there seems to have, have they done copy and paste too much, you know, <laughs> on this? You know, <laughs> where they've got UCR Cyclocross World Cup too many times on here and <laughs> auto fill going on on there. Right. But yeah, you, you go through there's so many dates. So for people that don't know, it's six. It is it's sixteen weeks. 
with uh, or sixteen dates, I should say, with uh, t- and then two more that ones for or two more for continental uh, championships, and then of course two more for national championships. Um, and it's a packed it's a packed schedule, basically from October through January. With very, I don't see much uh, many weeks without without something in there. So yeah, I mean, let's assume they all need to be go back to our, our C ones or World Cup. I think we could probably find the venues, uh-huh. but are people going to travel to it? You know, we heard the, uh, I, I disagree with them, but you, we heard the, the complaints from Pal Thousands about yeah. uh, racing in the US. And I mean, I'm, a point I made on the crosscast, um, for those who didn't hear that, is he was saying, well, why would we go out there? Our customers aren't out there. But actually, your customers watch you on the telly. Yes. They watch you on the TV. Yeah. They, there are very few who are actually at the race. And it does open up the market to people who can want to watch it in the evening, which is when it was shown in, in Belgium. Right. And so you know, if you're in some of these other places, I think you do get that the, the exposure for your brand uh-huh. by your riders racing somewhere where you can't buy the product. So long as people at home are watching it on the TV, because that's ultimately what they're paying for. It's a TV billboard, not the right, ones right. people who are actually at the venue yeah, itself. That's, it's a small number compared to the people viewing, for sure, yeah. Yeah, but you look at these dates, and I think you, you know the details better than me, but it's it's got to be of a certain number of countries. and Yeah, so and maxim- for yeah. With, with, 16, with 16 races, the agreement is it's got to be in eight countries, and I believe a maximum of half the races can only be in Belgium. So that means, uh, you know, there's got to be eight other countries, seven other countries besides Belgium that host at least uh, eight races mm-hmm. total. So, but, but it could be, it could still be World very Cup. Belgium centric, right? It could be, it's going to be, I think we're going to see a lot of Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg right there, you know, and then we're not going to see as much going far is farther out and and part of the reason part of the problem is going to be because i think they're thinking well you know a lot most of these dates are sunday uh and i think there's one wednesday in there and they're thinking well there'll be a c1 on saturday you can't have a c1 the same day as a world cup so then on sunday will be the world cup but the problem that that's setting up is what happened this weekend with boom and burn is that's a minimum? I, I I was hearing it's a minimum. I mean, you'd know this more than me. Minimum eight eight ish hour drive, uh, but from there from between those two places. So you know you finish a race on Saturday, and you've got an eight hour. It's going to be later in the day, right? And you got to basically drive for eight hours to get up the very next morning and then race a World Cup. Yeah, you have, um, and that's okay if you're a big team and you've got drivers. But if yeah. you're a small team with without that. That's uh-huh. going to be tough. And yeah. people have to, will have to take the choice. Look at Ellie Eazerby. He uh-huh. made the choice. Yes. It's a great success. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, it's it's going to be difficult. But I, I think if you look at the schedule already for the World Cup, you know, there's the standard three Belgian races. And it is only three. Mm-hmm. You know, let's recognize that. You know, it's always the Namur. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you've got... Zolder yeah. and where else? Coxider. Coxider. Yeah. yeah. So you know, those are the ones that are there every year, and there are quite a lot of. Uh, the majority are not. You know, Belgium has three. The US has two. Netherlands two. I think this year. And then you've got France, Czech Republic, uh, Switzerland. So it does move around some countries. Uh-huh. But you've got to remember, we've only had one uh, World Cup in the UK. For yeah. Many many years, and yeah. you, know, you you get you get two every year. I know <laughs> in, in, in the US. So I think there are other countries out there that yeah. could host, but it's it's the impact. It's, it's, I don't think it's the venues for the World Cups. It's the issue. It's the impact on other series. The only yes. way I can see it is that one of the other series merges, yes. and I can't see what would which one would want to. Yeah. Um, so you're but, saying like super prestige basically merges into the World Cup and it's one thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's the only is is the one that it would have to be because yeah. of the ownership. Um that's the only way I could see this working. Um, yeah. but then if you look at if you look in there at you know, there's some details, you know, you know what we're like, we love our details. <laughs> right, um, right. But you look in there at some of the details and you see that there's a Wednesday race. Uh-huh. Now, I, you look at a Wednesday race, November, surely that's got to be Koppenberg. 
Uh -huh. That's always a Wednesday race. Uh huh. Early November, but that's a DVV. So, yeah. <laughs> right. I, yeah, yeah. So, again, you know, there's this is a very frustrating thing right now. Um, I know uh, Sven Nies, Ezerby, Tone Ertz, Vanternout, we're all tweeting about this. Uh, and the article uh, that uh, the organizer at Burn, Roca, that I think you mentioned a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was like, hey, this is this is frustrating. One of the interesting things I thought he said in that article is, look, we're part of the EKZ. We aren't we aren't going to jeopardize our EKZ series just so that one race can be a World Cup. Yeah. I was very I happy to hear that. I thought that was a great, great thing that he said is, you know, I'm not going to put we're not going to put the series in jeopardy so that we can have one day be a World Cup. And I was like, good. That is a great thing. Mm, yeah, I I was really pleased to see that as well but yeah he's he's a good guy yeah <laughs> Christian yeah, Rocker. yeah um, <laughs> he's he's he knows what he's doing and he, he puts on great events um okay, let me ask you a question sure then. let's focus on baseball okay now because i know nothing about baseball but i know that the world <laughs> series uh -huh. has been won by the united states of america every year hasn't it right. so yeah there is a precedent for a world series to yeah be totally dominated in one region mm -hmm. and it seems that I th there was a an attempt was at some point to make it into a real world series but in the end it wasn't a success yeah. and so i i really fear that we'll end up finding so that it won't work if we and it'll end up being a world cup bit like the world series in baseball and it'll all just be belgium and the netherlands kind of thing mm. Is that what you think? That, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's, it wouldn't be good, but I fear that you look at the dates on there. We look at, you know, if, let's say there's only two U.S. rounds, mm -hmm. maybe maybe three. Maybe we could um, put it in Rochester yeah, as well. That's I think as, that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's say there are three U.S. rounds. Okay. If you're trying to compete in the World Cup, yeah, you have even less incentive. Yeah, and it, yeah, it could just undermine it entirely i think i think in, in order for it to be an incentive to come over here you'd have to have at least four of the 16 over here and that's not realistic that's not going to happen you know in my opinion i don't think i think what we'll probably see is we'll see next year there will be one because trek still has a contract and then after that we'll have zero i don't think but we'll have it grow, could it grow? i mean there was the there was the canadian race that didn't happen a few years ago that would be uh, great. There, oh, my God. I would love to have that. There was like a race in Montreal or Toronto or something like that. I think that would be amazing. But I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's my fear is that because, you know, and there's also this rule where if you have 16 races like this next schedule will have, um, you have to have eight countries. So the U.S. then is the six, quote unquote, the 16th race and the eighth country. That makes it very easy the following year to just drop that one race. And now you're seven countries with 15 races, which still fits into the rule. All you got to do is get rid of that date and you're still within the bounds of the rule of, you know, you go to 15 races in seven countries. So, or you could find another location and do that. But I think it makes it very easy to just simply do one more year with the U.S. with one World Cup and then just drop that race and go with 15. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I just think it makes it very easy to do that if that were what was going to, you know, was the plan. So, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it, we could, you could go speculate. You could speculate for forever. Long, long right. Time. But <laughs> you think, you know, what if you're a rider who does go to all of the World Cups uh -huh. and you finish 10th or, you know, or whatever? Pick, pick your position, finish yeah. fifth in every World Cup. Could you pick up as many points and end up with a World Cup standing, which is not representative of who the best rider is? Oh, I see. Just because you're because you're you were able to you stayed healthy and you were able to physically make it to every single week, would you then be unnecessary, like unrealistically higher ranked than? Yeah, that's that's absolutely what it could set up. I think is you're basically in a situation where it's very difficult to make it to all of them. Um, and so, so some top riders are actually choosing other places to go for certain weekends. And so their world cup points get decreased a little bit. And if you had a rider that raced nothing but world cups, they kind of get this artificially higher ranking than maybe their results 
uh, show. Yeah, I think that's very possible. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, oh, I'm starting to get, <laughs> get scared about this now. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, yeah, I just think, you know, which of these, the races that is doubtful whether they could ever be a World Cup. Um, yeah, like... You know, it's, well, because of the, the requirements that you have on the course. I mean, even, yeah, we mentioned Koppenberg Cross previously. Could that become a World Cup? Hmm, probably not. Could Zonhoven qualify to be a World Cup? You know, you've got these, and if you've got those races which are on the same day, uh, or even if they're not on the same day, which one would you target? If you, if you, what's going to be the most value to you as a rider? You know, having being peaking for Zonhoven or peaking for you know, somewhere in the outskirts of Paris. Where no one knows. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. Just I know because which race it's a... I'd rather attend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, there's a lot of turmoil right now. Um, I know a lot of the racers are up in arms. They're not very happy with this, the potential of, of the distances, some of the distances that they'd have to travel to make this work. Is it going to leave, you know, other races, maybe races will be, will be, uh, left with the, the decision to, okay, our choices are to move away from a, a date that we've traditionally had or pony up big bucks and become a World Cup. And that's not cool either. I don't like that either, <laughs> right? Well, what are we going to do with the junior series as well in the World Cup? And we're having to, no, it, rightly so. We're, yeah. There are now the junior races and the junior women's, which is supposed to be introduced for the World Cup yeah. in this season that we're talking about, 2020, 2021 season. Yeah, I mean, my daughter's planning on well, being a, get a qualifying. For nice. Um, I'm uh, not sure that um, she'd want to take every weekend of the entire year out of school when she's got exams. Sure, you know, right. it's, it's, that's, that's what we're going to be. Gonna well, be and see, this is one of the things that Roca in that article was talking about: is why do we not have more information? If this is this yeah. this devastating of a change, we are already in the month of October and we don't have any information. Right. It was promised to us by summer of 2019. It's now October. And all we have is this like weak outline of what things are going to be. And we have no other information than that. And that's I can <laughs> I can imagine how frustrating that is. Right. I mean, that's well, got to be. <clears throat> yeah. I, but you remember, you're talking to a Brit at the moment. <laughs> um, and if you followed any of the British politics, you know, we have the most <laughs> devastating and impactful political change happening in 10 days time. Yeah. Yeah. In the UK with leaving the European Union. Yeah. Possibly. Right. I, it's a topic you must never talk about. So I'm breaking all the rules here. But, you know, because I mean, politically you know, 10 days away is still have no idea what's going on. We have. So this is nothing. The UCI are looking incredibly well organized in comparison to the British government at the moment. And there we are. That's the end of my political rant. And we because, yeah, we have no no political things to talk about over here. No, 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 no. You're well, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about uh, the races that happened this weekend uh, with the boom and burn races uh, that we kind of mentioned. Um, so let's take the super prestige first, the boom race. Um, tell us about your son's race. Oh, yeah, yeah. Finn, he's been racing out as part of the, uh, it's called the Belgian Cyclocross Project. Um, uh -huh. And you may know Thomas Main. Um, <clears throat> he's a brilliant rider but thomas main came through this and other riders have been part of this um, so so finn's out there he's racing he, he's got one more race of this block to do three blocks um one which is just finishing uh one which is over the christmas block and then one right at the very end of the season so oh he's he's raced well pulled across heaton uh -huh. boom nice um yeah and he's but, still you know, i, I think i saw his racing age is 18 right that's right. Yeah. Okay. So he's a first year under 23. Gotcha. And, and yeah, it's been a, yeah, it, it, he's, he's actually ra he raced Bohm as a junior last year. He went out with the national team. They okay. took out a, a few riders. Um, so he has raced there before, but it's just mad. It's just, <laughs> yeah, you're at the, at the UK national series, uh -huh. national trophy. No, he, he's, you know, he, he's, can be towards the front of that field there okay. and you know, he's used to that speed 
in these, he's at the back of the field. <laughs> right. And it's like another planet. You know, the, it's, the speed is unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, so he was 27th in Bohm. So uh-huh. a really, yeah, he's had some really good results, credible results, but he's there for experience. Sure. Yes. But, sure. yeah, getting the on-the-ground information about it is <laughs> it's great, uh, hearing what's really going on um, uh, for the riders on the course. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, for that one, it's mud it's really oh, slippery really yeah. difficult i think we all realize that for anyone that watched it yes yeah all right so let's talk about um the 777 team uh neil have you been like watching this this is amazing yeah i mean they've been growing and they're they're kind of kind of in some ways come out of nowhere yeah you look at them you look at the the riders in the team and Actually, it's no surprise. But I think what I like about it is there are a lot of different teams who are at the front end of the women's field. It's not like right. it's just one or two. And they're all different. They've got, they even always seem to have a different way of riding. Yeah. Well, it's what I think um, for that, for the 777 team, um, Yara Costaline is, she's like the unknown of the, of the three right now, because last year we saw our Zufi and, and versed so much. Um, and she's come on after a few years on the road and Bart Wellens has just put together this great small, you know, I just love the fact too, that it's like, you know, we have this rule that you have to have at least one woman on the team. And he was like, well, Hey, how about we have just women and we have three of them, you know? And I was like, ah, it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, and so they added her this year, uh, to go with the other two and she, you know, which, at the beginning of the season, I was like, well, we'll see how she does. Cause these other two are really top, you know, top tier riders. And she's come in and just been great. You know, she's just been like this surprise, this unknown, uh, rider. And it's just been riding up at the front end of many of these races this season so far. Yeah. And you look at their results. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of the team has had either a win or a second place. Yeah. You know, they're just doing amazingly well. I mean, Anna reversed, you would expect, bearing in mind she's European champion, she's no surprise this year, but Yara Castellane and even Alice Azufi, they're, yeah. they're, they're riders that we've seen improve year on year, and this year they've improved again. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, and young riders, I don't know, it's, a, it's becoming quite a cliche now, but right. yeah, young riders, right. exciting young riders. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Castelline has a, a two year contract with the team, I believe, and they have a new name. This year they are the officially the pro women CX team seven, 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 or the triple seven. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, in, in this race was of course, Can we uh, just call them 21, <laughs> <laughs> three cubed or seven cubed. <laughs> I mean, uh, and so in this race, her teammate, uh, Arzufi, Alicia, Alicia Marie Arzufi uh, takes the win. Um, just, you know, that was great to see because she, she I was looking for a big ride from her uh, this season and she produced it uh, that. And then I think uh, Eva Lechner got second, right? So we had two Italian women, the first two yeah. steps on the podium, which is very cool to see. Yeah, I was, I was really pleased about that, especially as I was tipping Ava Lechner um, on the last cross car. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously that's what it's all about when you get to the... Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, uh, what I thought was really interesting with that is the team were focusing on on the race in Boehm. And, but it would have been easy if for Lechner and Arzufi, you know, because Bern is so close to the Italian border. It's, right. You know, it's a couple of hours away. Yeah, uh, so it would have been really easy. They for had the to pass them. it on their way to yeah. Boom, right? <laughs> Pretty much, uh, very well, close. They went the wrong way if they did that, but yeah. <laughs> no, oh yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, if they were driving home. Yeah, yeah. Yes, well, actually, I was, you suppose you could say it was um, it was on the way, but I, I think they're both based in Belgium. Uh, but yeah, the the two of them, Ava Lechner, she's she's one of the few women of well, historically one of the few women of of that class and and. I'll say vintage. I mean, she's 34, which is now <laughs> right. quite vintage amongst right. the women's team. Right. The women's, um, I think, I think yeah. the World Cup was the, was the youngest world, women's podium ever. Yeah. In, in Did Bern. someone have to go and buy them the champagne because they weren't able to <laughs> yes. get it themselves? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I agree with you. And talk about somebody who's just amazing is Eva Lechner. I mean, 
If you if you do if you send her anything on Twitter, she always likes it or or says something back to you every single time. I mean, she's just awesome, awesome. I, uh, I think that Ava's. I wonder if she's focusing on, actually on the Olympics for next year, the mountain yeah, biking, and this sure. is. Uh, it's probably her last chance to be at the at her prime. Uh-huh. So I think she's. I, I wonder if that's what's really dri- driving her here. But Sana Khan, third. Yes. Uh, so, well, that's and, another thing I wanted to talk about with Sane Khan. Now, I don't know about you, but did you, I, I felt last week um, in Guyton, she looked different than she had up to that point. I thought, uh, you know, this early in the season, she's kind of out there. She's just kind of riding easy. She's putting in a little efforts, but nothing major. I thought last week in Guyton, when she gets second, you really saw her. All right, I'm going to put it. I'm going to be really focused. I'm going to like. It, it's the season is on now, right? And she really put in, you know, like I said, much more focus, better efforts, and and ends up getting second. And I thought I saw that same thing uh, for her in Boom too. Is okay. This is I'm I'm, I'm getting serious. It's like Sonny Kant is getting serious now about the season. But this year she didn't travel to the U.S., which is no. you know, really sad for those of you wanting to watch her race. But she, right. normally she's not that great <laughs> when she has No, that. she doesn't Maybe do well worked, over here. It's worked better for her this yeah. year. I mean, I thought that she crushed Castellane at uh-huh. the end of that race. Yes. I, it was – she knew what she needed to do, and yep. she did it. <laughs> and that was an, that was fa- a fantastic finish. To that. But I think that Kant is at a better form early season – than she is usually at this time of year. So I, I'm gonna. I think she's someone to. Well, obviously she's always someone to watch. Sure. But yeah, I think she's someone who's focusing this yep. year. And yeah. You see she, you know, she wasn't so impressive in Bern, uh, but. Yeah, for the races she seems to be focusing on, yes. she's way up there. Yeah, it's like it's like you can see she's got a plan, and she's so she's got so much experience under her belt now. She's like, look, I've got a plan. I know what I'm doing, and, and she just seems very in control of what she's doing. It, it's, it's how it looks to me, and I just I just love watching her race. I think she's a she's a, just an outstanding athlete to watch race. So. There we go. I think any, any race she's in is is way is much better. I always <laughs> I always think that. So, um, all right. Well, let's move on to the men's race. Uh, Telenet kind of goes to the front of this race early. Did you see that? I mean, they kind of they needed a big win. I think. Yeah. This yeah. season. This they, season. I mean, they you know they they needed. Okay, we gotta we gotta get a big win this season, and that they kind of just went out and did it. Yeah, but they they've got such firepower in that team yeah they've got yeah, they've got a ter- still a terrifying um ds for that team in sven mace sure who seems to be fitter than any of them uh, <laughs> yeah and I, I i think yeah they it was a i think it was a race where it could have gone multiple ways actually mm-hmm. um yeah it was so it was so hard yeah and uh and you saw just people running out of gas uh, as as the race uh, unfolded. Right. And there was a bit, I think there was a quite a fitness element to this one as well. Uh huh. And so they end up uh, Tone and Quentin Hermans get one and two, and they end up taking four out of the top five. With only the only thing breaking up their string there is Thomas Pidcock. What a race for him! Yeah, he he did a good one didn't he yes. he was yeah we again we had him um we had him on the last podcast and he was saying he was hoping for a top 10 yep i remember um, yeah but he was uh, really thought he could get a top five um so to get a podium man was just um that was great i thought that was you know really good sign for him yeah he, I, I think he's far from fresh he's had a hard uh, road season, uh, building up to the world yeah. on the road that he wanted to do well in um, in Yorkshire. Uh, so I, I I wonder what we could, how he's going to develop this year. You, know, you can never rule him out of any race, sure. But I'm just really looking forward to getting back to the you know what we used to have for the yeah. Pidcock yeah. Easerby head to heads, yes. and we're going to oh, we, well I think we could see some 
drama. I agree. <laughs> Later in the because season. I mean, it was it was great to finally see him put a whole race together and just come out and and have a really good ride and finish on the podium. That being said, I still think the best to come this season is the best is still to come for Pidcock this season. I mean, we're going to see, and I think at some point we're going to see him ride away from the field like like we've seen Ezer beat do uh, this season already. So I I just think it's a matter of time, and we're going to see that from him. Yeah. Okay. Pidcock. He's a given. He's someone to watch. But I think <laughs> right. you really ought to be looking out for the other two riders in his team. Um, for Abby Mae Parkinson, uh-huh. she hasn't ridden a cross for a few years. And she's already had a top 10. Okay. And for Cam Mason, Cameron Mason, who he's does some he's, – he, he's brilliant on, um, on his YouTube channel. He does amazing stuff, really, really good, high-quality um, – to what is it, kind of on the inside? Uh-huh. And Cam, he started off sort of finishing in the 30s, and already this season he's had some top 20s in C1s. Um, I think he was, um oh, trying to remember, was he 17th, 16th, 17th? I'm doing this from memory. Um, in um, Boom. And so we're, all, we're getting to see Cam Mason. Uh-huh. someone else really right. to keep a good eye on because he's he starts at the back at the moment yeah and is working his way through yeah improving so, and improving as soon so as I he gets some starting position yeah yeah well that's good that's great to hear that's great to hear um all right well was there anything else we want to mention about boom that that we didn't cover do you think i think we're all right can yeah, move on and talk a little bit about the World Cup in Bern. Like you mentioned, a lot of some riders didn't do both boom and burn. It was a long drive uh, between these two races, about somewhere between seven and eight hours, I believe, is what Google says. For the men, we'll start with the men this time. Ezerbeet wins his third World Cup. So what I'm thinking is if he wins another one, it's going to take a sweep of every remaining World Cup for him not to win the series. The series could be over after the next World Cup, basically. <laughs> when when there are riders who haven't even raced one of them yet. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that's a very weird th- dynamic. So, you know, everyone's talking about, well, you know, uh, Vanderpool, you know, misses the, the first two races here or there, still comes back and, you know, is pushing for the series and this and that. That's going to, that might be impossible. It might not, you know, I think he's out, I think, you know, could be out of the run. He might be already out of the running because Ezerbeet's not going to say he comes back and Vanderpool comes back and rides away from every field for the rest of the season. Ezerbeet's probably going to be second, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Most of those races, Ezerbeet's going to be second uh, or or very high up uh, and just be able to you know still just take the overall all win with that. So I think, man, the just the the smarts of coming over here, winning both of those. And then I think it, it kind of throws a question mark in because you're wondering, okay, what's he going to do for the first World Cup when everybody gets back to to uh, the European continent and there's there's more racers, more strength in the field, and he comes in and just still just wins, right? Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't think he would be as dominant again, but he, yeah, he would he had a great race and with two nets, gave him a good run. Yeah, uh, but two nets second. But this is the same story that we saw last year with with two nets being right up there. And of course, Ertz won the World Cup last year. So right. in some ways, it was very similar to this year, uh-huh. where the riders who were out racing the full season they got enough buffer so they were they could go to the end and and win it overall. But this time, I think Isabeet looks like he's doing an Ertz. I think it, I totally agree. I yeah. can't see anyone else challenging enough unless something unfortunate happens so i don't wish on him sure, but sure. It, then it, it's gonna be easy beat easy beats to lose yeah. already we've yeah. only done three right <laughs> exactly exactly so um also uh for, let's just switch over for the women real quick Anne marie verse like we said basically tops off the youngest women's podium we've ever seen with uh alvarado and anna k and hang on what did you say for third <laughs> that writer called named Anna K. Amazing. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she's done it a year early. I thought she would do it next year. <laughs> Were you like on the edge of your seat, jumping in the air? And 
<laughs> no, I was I was off my seat a long time. I think probably Helen and Steph, Helen and Steph Wyman probably were too. I think. <laughs> well, what happened I mean, at the last year's UK national champs? There's this brilliant photograph actually of Anna Kay overtaking Helen at the national champs, and um, she she finished ahead of Helen. Um, yeah. And they're both just grinning ear to ear. And it was before there was the announcement that Helen was going to be moving across to ex Bursa okay. um, uh, to join Anna there. And it was, it was this re- a, a photograph and you just couldn't explain it. Why are they both so happy that Anna's <laughs> overtaken her? And it's because Helen had, when they'd been out pre-riding, Helen had said to her, look, if you're going to overtake anyone, do it here and take that line down there. And she kind of did it. <laughs> to Helen <laughs> so, so the two of them they work together all the time uh, yeah and so Anna Kay she's a storming little rider and man if you think oh she man looks small you're right yes she's, a, she's yeah, so she, tiny oh my goodness well and you know one of the reasons why she bunny hops the hurdles uh-huh. I'm sure it's because it's so difficult for her to lift the bike up. <laughs> it's probably easier for her to bunny hop most You're of the time right. than it is to actually carry the bike. Yes. So, yeah, she's she's phenomenal. And we've seen her rise. She's got better and better and better. Mm-hmm. It, on, as we talked earlier about the UK National Series, no, UK National Trophy Series. Uh-huh. And we've seen her come through the National Trophy. But, yeah, I, I think she can go all the way. I, yeah. I'm so excited to see her form this early we were expecting it but i say i wasn't expecting to see her on a world cup podium this season yeah i, I was fully expecting it next year yeah I, I, i'm so excited i mean that that was a full-on a full-on field there too it wasn't like i mean i think probably evie richards maybe one of the only big names that wasn't there i mean well if you count voss i mean but i don't know i would i you know Voss comes and seems like she comes and goes all the time throughout the season. Um, so, yeah, other than that, uh, you know, it wasn't like it was a depleted field or anything. I mean, she just rode unbelievably well. It was just amazing to watch her go through that course. And you look at who she's ahead of. You know, yeah. It is the who's who. As you say, there's, there's really very few people missing yeah. from there. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, I think she's, it was a great race. It did suit her. You no, know, she's small, agile. Yep. Uh, you yep. know, she can bunny hop. She's so it was, it, everything went her way uh, in terms of the course layout. But I, I think, think didn't she, she even, do it again? Didn't she ride those that there was that one set of barriers that were right after that right turn? And I think she she rode that. I think the first lap when they were still bunched up, and I was like, oh man. And because everyone was getting off and running those, including the entire, almost the entire men's field ran that their first lap too, because it was such a, a tight turn that you couldn't get much speed up to then hop the barriers. Once it got spread out, more people were doing it. But on the first lap, almost no one was doing it. But Anna Kay, I think, did it on the first lap in the women's race. Yeah, and you look at the result. It was only 10 seconds to Katie Keogh. Uh-huh. Uh, it was Katie Keogh behind it, was it? Yeah. yeah. And there were... Yeah, that 10 seconds, that could be jumping the barriers, Every the lap. other curb that she was jumping. Uh-huh. But Anna Kay, there were a few things that you can really sum her up. If you look at Mount Crumpet, she's the only woman rider Riding. who was at the front of that race who was even attempting to ride it this year. Uh-huh. She's got that power to wait. Yes, she, her weight is like one kilo or something. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, she's so tiny, um, but she, um, she's got the power, so she'd make it up there. And then at the World Champs last year, she was the only woman who rode the. There was that huge bank. Yes, um, at yep, the yep. back end of the course. Yeah, and she just tried it and tried it and tried it every <laughs> lap, and eventually she made it up. <laughs> and there are very few of the men that made it up as yeah, well. So yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of characterizes her. She's yeah. got such grit uh, and she goes for it. Yeah. Um, those qualities that you need in a cross rider. Yeah. What, so what did you think about the burn world cup as a whole? I mean, taking the whole event in, uh, as far as watching it, um, I believe you said you watched it on Red Bull. Yeah, I did. Um, and so the, what did you think I'll, of that? I'll, and what did you just kind of think of the race as a whole? Um, let's start with the race. Um, I think the race as a whole, I enjoyed it. I, it was, I thought it was really good, actually, I must admit, because um, even though the women's race was fairly dominated by Anne Reverse, there was a lot going on all the time in yeah. that race. Um, people's 
know, in the men's race with broken shoes and you know, there was <laughs> again, you know, a lot of drama. Right. Yeah, again. I, I, I wonder if he put the one back on from the Saturday. The same you know, I Saturday. thought that same thing. Yeah. I wondered yeah. that exact same thing. Yeah. That's so uh, funny. But there, I, I, I think, I, I know, you know, before we started recording, you were saying you didn't find it quite as exciting as some of them. And so I might have been skewed by the Anna Kay <laughs> right. incident of right. her finishing on the podium. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it. And I think the last year I didn't. Um, but uh, the course really benefited from the weather. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing which I oh, can't bear on that course is that ramp curb um, section on it where there's that, that slidey ramp and we saw someone uh, crash out on there. Are you talking, um, oh, where it's a comp, you can either go up the ramp or hop the curb? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, a little weird. I just, I can't see why it's there. Uh, and uh, yeah, why, why you you have barriers elsewhere on the course that are the same height, so you could always run it. Yeah, uh, I just don't understand why it's there, and it it looks like it makes it more dangerous than if the ramp wasn't there at all. And it just it forces it into a single file at that point on the on the course. So even if there's close bunch racing up until that point, then it's not close bunch racing anymore unless people are hopping it. And the only person, the only woman that I saw hop it was Anna Kay. Uh-huh. So. It, I think it really spoils the race, uh, that little that little section. But apart from that, the rest of it, I really enjoyed it, actually. I think, I think the conditions made it into something that it wasn't last year. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see it again. Yeah, I, and, I, I thought it was a, a good venue. And certainly, something yeah, different. a beautiful setting and, and just that, that one sculpture of the of the two figures laying on the hill and the one pointing up into the sky. I mean, really oh, cool yeah. stuff in that big swimming pool. And, and, yeah. And I like what Christian Rock is doing. Yeah, the whole event. No, it's not just World Cup. Lock the doors, World Cup. Right. Uh, right. It's uh, a big participation. Lots yep. of youth events as well. I, yeah. I think that the, the it could be that model for the future. Yeah. Yeah. In well, terms of the Red Bull coverage, yeah, the, I, it was that was that was quite funny actually because we're on the crosscast last week. We we knew about it um, before it was public. I know. And that's I, we, that's where I found out about it. Was listening to you guys. And um, so we literally just before we recorded, we had, <laughs> oh, we've got the go ahead. We, we can talk about it. Um, and then after we recorded, we had, a, oh, no, we've we can't talk about it. So it's like, oh, I'm going to have to edit it out. And then, uh, you know, you're starting the edit and then it's, oh, we might be able to talk about it. But what did we say? Exactly. <laughs> and so it was, and so it was, uh, it was questioned, questionable whether they'd get all the uh, rights all sorted out yeah. um, before this weekend. That was, that was the big question. Um, but if it, that was their first attempt at it and it was absolutely excellent. I, it, the, the commentary was, was great. Um, and I, I think with the with Red Bull putting their investment into it, you see what they've done to mountain biking. Yeah, oh um, yeah, which it's, is it's incredible. Just, yeah, it's just amazing. Um, and if they can start to go that way, it'd be great. I'm not surprised that they have done it because I was I was wondering why are they starting to put Red Bull helmets on cyclocross riders? <laughs> right, and they've been doing it for a few years now, two or three years. Uh, so it's now not unusual. So. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. I, to be honest, I expected that they'd be covering the EKZ tour because geographically, Makes, uh, Red yeah. Bull is focused in you know, Switzerland, Austria, mm-hmm. uh, is where where they're based. I w- but the fact that they've got the World Cups is just great. And what we were talking about earlier with the expansion of the World Cup, mm-hmm. that could mean that we get high quality coverage for a large number of races. And, and if they can keep it up with you know, Rob Hatch, who you know, he, he's he's a fantastic commentator who who we had uh, on Red Bull with Helen Wyman, mm-hmm. the two of them, it was their first time doing it. And Rob makes, you know, he would make the, a traffic jam exciting <laughs> in terms of who's going to win, who's going to get through first. Yeah, he, yeah. He's got a real way of keeping your interest um, and making everything so exciting. So it was, it was great. You know, I'm not taking, taking anything away from other, from other commentary teams out there. Sure. Um, sure. It's a hard job. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I, I was, in, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I think that that actually helped uh, on a race like that, where sometimes it like 
we up and see it. It yeah. settles down. Yeah. All right, Neil. Well, hey, this has been amazing. Uh, before we sign off, though, how? tell me about CrossCast. What do you guys have planned in the future, and how can people find it? Well, we are... Of, um, Not that it's that hard in this day and age to find a podcast if you want to, <laughs> especially if you know yeah. the name, right? <laughs> Yeah, so go onto your podcast show and search for the Crosscast. We're also on Spotify. Um, probably the easiest thing is to like the Facebook page that we have or the uh, Twitter account, uh, which are at the Crosscast. And you can follow me at Crosscast Neil on Twitter is the best place. I'm on some other places at Crosscast Neil as well, but that's the one which is where we put everything else out. Well, man, that all sounds great, Neil. Thanks again for being on with me. This has been an absolute pleasure and a blast just to get like different like points of view. It's so great, right? Yeah, well, it's always it's been fun. I've been listening to Bookshop <laughs> Show and Bookshop CX for a while, and um, it's it's quite confusing actually when you have that podcast host and they talk back to you when you <laughs> make comments. So it's, yeah, it's been great fun. Um, so yeah, it's been great to chat with the infamous Scotty D. All right. Well, thanks again, Neil. And we'll talk again soon, man. Yeah. We'll see you. See you soon. I was about to sign, do the sign off for the cross cast <laughs> then, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll speak no, to you, you, you can do that if you want. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you on the other side of the tape. There you go. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> All right, and that is this edition of Do They Do That in Europe with Neil Mansell. We're going to try and do more of these. Again, for now, this is just a special show that we're put that I'm putting out for, you know, for the membership pledge drive that we're doing, encouraging people to become wide angle podium members. Help us out, help us pay for all this stuff, and help us do great things when we can combine uh, all the funds that people send us. For instance, if you're an avid Bike Shop CX listener, you know that the Bike Shop CX podcast itself is paying for a scholarship to the Montana CX camp this year. We are going to be giving them the funds for hopefully at least one rider to go to the Montana CX camp. And if we get enough members and enough people commit money uh, to our show, you have to pledge to the Bike Shop CX show specifically. And if you do that, any money we get from membership over the next several months, I don't know exactly how many months it's going to be, something around five or six, but any money we get over those months from memberships is going to go to the Montana CX camp. So this is what we are doing with your money. When you become a member of the Wide Angle Podium and you support the Bike Shop CX show specifically and support all the shows on the Wide Angle Podium, they're all so good. The Gravel Lot is just... a The, the interview that they did with Katie Compton this week is just amazing and is in, very informative and very fun to listen to. You thought you knew Katie Compton? Well, you probably didn't because there's some great information in that show. So all these shows like this uh take time they take you know so getting a thank you from you guys by becoming a member is just very very helpful thing and we like i said we're trying to do great things with this money when we get it pulled together and trying to really support this sport when perhaps it needs it the most so a great thing you can do to help support cyclocross in the u.s is become a wide angle podium member and support what we're doing. I want to say thank you to Neil Mansfield for being on the show with me this week. That is, we have been trying to get Neil on forever. I'm so glad that it finally got to happen. If you get a chance, look up the Crosscast, give that a listen. You won't be disappointed at all. All right, I think that's going to cover it for this week. I hope everybody is getting out there and riding. If you are getting out there and riding, you know the drill. Be careful out there. Take care of each other out there. And until next time, the bike shop is closed.